Alibaba just dropped a Titan AI video generator, 1.2.1. People say it's the most powerful open source AI video tool ever built. For months, we have been waiting for an AI video generator to deliver one of the most sought after features, unrestricted image to video generation. No surprise that one is now the talk of the town, but is it actually uncensored? Let's put that to the test. Today, we'll be focusing on image to video only. I'll be pitting one against the top video generators like King and Halo to see how well it handles complex scenes. Can it generate realistic facial expressions? What about fast-paced motion? How well does it generate large crowds? And that's just the start. I'll also test non-realistic images to see if it holds up into the animation and stylized visuals. By the end of this video, you'll know the potential use cases of 1.2.1 and whether it is a game changer or just an overpriced experiment. Let's start with facial expressions. AI video struggles a bit with negative emotions. My instructions were to make her look sad, with a tear falling, but she has a neutral expression instead. However, I'd say this worked slightly better than Kling, which didn't even go for a close-up, despite me specifically asking for it. That said, Kling has more natural micro-expressions. The subtle twitching and head movement just feel more organic. I can't decide which one wins here. For the second test, I tried to make a sad expression again, this time using an image that already looks sad. You can see the tears in his eyes, but even though I specifically ask for the tears to fall down his cheeks, they don't. Kling couldn't do it either. You don't even see wetness in his eyes. Though, like in the first example, Kling shows more subtle, realistic emotion. I'm happy with both, but one takes the win here. This test proves video generators can handle joy way better than sadness. Both follow the prompt spectacularly, though in the one video, the apple moves weirdly, like magic is carrying it to her hand. Kling's movement isn't perfect either, but the facial expression feels more genuine. One thing I noticed, one stays more faithful to the original color settings. The Kling video looks darker, with more contrast. This is a common flaw for Kling, by the way. Personally, I don't mind. It gives the video that cinematic flavor, but it's something to consider, especially if you need strict style consistency. I made my prompts more descriptive for better results. Even though the original image has a neutral expression, one managed to convey anger, but it skipped the shock face. Kling didn't do so well here. She remained mostly neutral, just slightly tense. Sometimes one's videos look better when sped up, but that's true for many AI video platforms. Kling is still king when it comes to normal motion speed. However, in the next test, one had more natural motion. Kling was a bit slower and didn't fully complete the embrace action. If I slow down the one video, you'll see something weird happening with the lady's nose. It might not be a big deal though. I also ran the same prompt on Halo, another solid AI video generator, and it couldn't hold a candle to the other two. By the way, I'm not cherry picking the best clips here because you need to see the reality of AI video generation. No matter how good your prompts are, these models consistently fall short in some way, and it's important to know exactly where they struggle. Crowd dynamics don't seem to be one's strongest suit. People are barely moving when they should be walking. This is a similar issue I've seen in Runways Gen 3 when crowds are involved. Both Kling and Halo handle crowds better than one. They show more movement, and the motion feels more natural, especially Kling's. Also, one's output became more high contrast, which usually doesn't happen in simpler scenes. Now, for a more subtle crowd test, when animating a United Nations assembly, a weird diffused light popped up in the first generation, so I had to regenerate it. While the second attempt was noticeably better, very few people are actually moving, which makes the scene feel unnatural. Hate to be repetitive, but this is peak runway gentry behavior. And on top of that, Kling handled this much better. Almost every figure in the conference room has some level of movement, even if subtle, making it far more realistic. So if crowd scenes are a priority, one would not be my first choice. But let's see how well it can handle other complex motions. I wanted to see if one could pull off a 3D parallax effect for a free fall scene, but the first generation had weird morphing mid-clip. The second attempt was much better, but the hands got all morphed up. That said, the motion itself is decent. You can see a subtle camera tilt near the end as the subject nears the street below. Kling produced a sharper quality video, but the fall felt too linear to be natural. Both clips have a lot of morphing in the road below, and they both look better sped up. 
I also tested dancing motions, but neither Wan nor Kling did too well. To be fair, most AI video generators struggle with dancing. Wan had less morphing, but the movement felt too slow. Kling's had more fluidity, but also this weird front becomes back distortion. Testing fighting movements proved that Kling is still far superior for dynamic motion. Wan's version had too much morphing on the staff, making the clip unusable for any professional project. Kling, on the other hand, produced an okay striking motion. I mean, can you call that a strike? A little bit. Also a little bit like mere posturing. This is hands down one of my favorite AI-generated photos of all time. I originally animated it using Kling a while back. The realism in this mythical scene makes it one of the most badass clips I've ever generated. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for Wan's version. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but you can see the jittering in the Sphinx belly area. And the overall sharpness doesn't hold up to Kling's. The side-by-side -side shows a staggering difference. I also tested how well one performs in non-live action styles, starting with this Studio Ghibli-inspired anime clip. Halo usually shines in 2D animation, but one surprisingly held its own. The farmer moves a bit more, though it's irregular and choppy at times. One's plant motion looks more realistic, but Kling delivered the most impressive results. Not only are the farmer's movements smoother, but the animation flows more naturally overall. The only distortion I noticed was in the thumb, but everything else looks fantastic. That said, this still isn't quite Studio Ghibli quality, but we're getting close by the day. Through these tests, I'm starting to think Kling might actually surpass Halo in 2D animation as well. Even in 2.5D animation, or whatever you call this art style, Halo tends to alter facial features slightly. So I was actually impressed that one kept the face more consistent than a video model designed specifically for 2D animation. If you look closely at the subject's faces, one's version stays truer to the original features. But when you bring Kling into the mix, it takes the win. Kling has a level of crispness and sharpness that the other two just can't match. Though in this case, one's motion feels slightly more realistic. I also tested mythic animations, but one 2.1 didn't perform as well as Kling, neither fully followed the prompt, but at least Kling's motion were fluid and dynamic. Meanwhile, one's version still suffers from that classic runway zoom-in flaw. You've seen that one 2.1 can handle human emotion and has decent motion flow. It also performs well in 2D animation, but where it truly shines is its zero restrictions on generation, meaning you can create anything you want, no guardrails whatsoever. And if you're a storyteller, no matter your medium, you'll likely want a tool that can generate the full reality of the world, which may sometimes include graphic content. So I tested it on Coca-Cola, not the drink. Playing flat out refused the image, but one, no problem. So I tested whether it could, you know, it failed. What I got instead was a hand smoking a cigarette. Probably because even though it's unrestricted, there's not much training data on... Next up... Violence. Of course, I had to test out... With this prompt. Surprisingly, Kling didn't flag it. I guess with Kling, you can get away with some blood. But it didn't fully follow the prompt. One, on the other hand, turned up the red. You should see this. It looks straight out of Evil Dead. Next, I wanted to see how well it could recreate this Game of Thrones scene. And here we go. I think you can tell which one went all out. Honestly, I'm glad I can't show you this. Both of them look more gruesome than in the actual show. But once, this thing needs a 35 plus rating. Even I am too young to see this. I know this video is focused on one, but I gotta say, Kling 1.6 handles extreme generations surprisingly well. So that raises the question, do we even need one at all? Let's see if Kling can keep up in the next segment. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. I covered, you know, cause, you know, YouTube. And yet again, Kling surprised me. It actually generated this suggestive clip. But both animated realistic facial expressions. But trust me, Kling did better overall. I was almost convinced one couldn't do anything Kling couldn't do better until I started using hardcore references. And I watched Kling reject them one after another. Turns out, Kling will accept anything except the rugs and anatomy. But one, it generates anything. No image has ever been rejected. Doesn't matter what I type in the text prompt either. Everything goes through. 
I tested so many graphic generations in different art styles too. It has given me mind-blowing, stiffy-inducing animations that I unfortunately cannot show you here. One costs 40 cents per 5 second clip, making it one of the most, if not the most, expensive AI video generators by a large margin. Which brings me to the conclusion that it's just not worth it. Not when we have more cost-effective options like Kling that deliver superior quality in most ways. Sure, it has some restrictions, but as you've seen today, Kling handles a lot of graphic content just fine. And so does Halo. At this point, the only real reason to use one is if you're making corn. You know what I mean. That's the only way you could even begin to justify the cost. If you still want to give it a shot, I've left a link in the description so you can try one on fall.ai. Oh, and by the way, every clip in this video except Kling's has been upscaled to 2K and had its frame rate boosted to match Kling's native 1080p. If you want to know how to do that for free, I've got a tutorial linked in the description or maybe on the end screen. That's it for today. See you next time. Bye.